do is uh, we're going to play a video that's going to sort of take you through a high level demo um, that'll go through kind of you know who we are, what we do, uh, give you give you a taste of the software, give you a taste of the marketing product, and then I'm going to come back on. Uh, and rant about about a few things you saw in the subject line. Of, I got this Kim Kardashian thing. I'm gonna have to tear into and show you guys. And then we'll get into your Q and A, uh, which is which is the funnest part. So your questions, uh, what questions you have for me about the software, about your art business, about where you're at, about the next step, sales, anything. Uh, we'll get into all of it. So I'm looking forward to it. And we'll start off with Taylor, and then I'll see you guys uh, on the other end, as it were. So go ahead, take it away, Taylor. All right, everybody, welcome to today's session. My name's Taylor, I'm on the marketing team at Art Storefronts. One of the people putting together our many resources and consulting and mentoring our members on a regular basis in workshops like these. Today's session is for non-members, so this is a free, wide open session, and how it's a little bit different than what you get as a member. Our member workshops, which we hold five times a week at this point on various topics, are largely tactical, right? So it's giving uh, our members ongoing advice, tweaks to the since we last spoke, and uh, making sure their business is always growing. By contrast, today will be largely about what we call unclogging the drain. Before you're even ready for tactical or strategic advice, you need to get the big thing out of the way. And we found through these non-member workshops that uh, most artists and photographers out there have something. They have a big thing in their way. It can be a mindset problem, some kind of self-limiting belief that if you just simply do away with it, the path becomes clear. Or it could be something more practical like uh, not, not doing something Thing that you really need to be doing. Whatever it is, we're gonna find out about it today and fix it for you. Before we get into all that good stuff, I have two segments for you up top here, opening remarks. The first one, stuff you need to know about this workshop, how it works. The second, a little bit of an overview on art storefronts, uh, just to get some context, set the stage, you know, who we are and what we do. First up, the need to know information about today's workshop. To get in line to chat with us, right? To, to get unmuted and start to uh, get some help, you need to use the raise hand button in Zoom. So at the bottom of your Zoom window, you'll see the participants button. You're gonna hit that and that'll open this on the right hand side where you'll find the blue raise hand button. You hit that and that will do it, raise hand. You'll see up here, your name will show the, the blue raise hand. Button. That's the system we use. We go top to bottom, uh, unmuting everyone that has their hand raised and uh, helping them out. So if you have a question up front, you know you want to talk to us, you can do that right now and get early in line so you'll be one of the first people to get some help today. If something comes up later and you, you don't have a question yet but something comes to mind, you can always do it later in the session too. The second thing you need to know is that we have a page that we call the show notes and that's where we aggregate all of the links to resources that come up today. So if uh, one of us says we have a really good video about that or we say we actually have a podcast episode that would help you out, you don't need to be hunting around for that in the moment. We're doing that for you. We're collecting it all. Here's what the page looks like. We're going to send this to you after today's session ends. We're going to email it to you. So you'll find the replay at the top, right? So if you have to leave early or you arrived late uh, or even if you missed it all together, uh, you can always catch up with the replay here. And then this is the show notes section I was talking about. All the links will be there, everything that came up. So you'll have that. Don't worry about looking anything up in the moment. We're taking care of it. Uh, I should also mention on this page while you're here, there are a couple of request a demo buttons. Those are your go-to spots for either signing up if you just want to get going or reaching out to us, having a more in-depth chat about our features and our pricing and stuff like that. That's how you start those conversations. If you just want to do your research and uh, get to know us, see if there's a good fit you hit the request the demo button you fill out the form and we'll get in touch that's how you do that okay second segment today uh, what even is art storefronts okay so here is the very quick overview and like I said the demo is where they go in depth they'll do an hour for you they'll answer as many questions as you have but today I don't know how many people here already know everything about us nothing about us so I'll just go right down the middle and do a very quick overview um, there are two halves to art storefronts there is the website software right so that is the art selling website and then there's the marketing program, and that is really the fuel for that website engine. The, the website could be fantastic. We believe it's the best 
website software for artists ever designed. We really believe that, and I'll show you why in a moment. However, all of the power of that website is meaningless if there's no one on it. So the marketing program is what completes the whole membership. Uh, I'll show you both halves now, starting with the website. There are hundreds of features, hundreds of features. It is very difficult to give you a full overview of everything that's going on with this software. So I think I will just show you uh, what's really most important, right? The product page. At the end of the day, everything on your website is designed around getting people here to the product page where then they can check out and buy your artwork. So what is the big deal with these product pages? Um, to explain that, let's just clarify that I am showing you an artwork product page today. That's the important one. We also have what we call standard product pages, and that's where you can sell anything. If you have ceramics, jewelry, uh, clothing, you can sell all of those product types on art storefronts. It does not need to be solely wall art. But I wanna show you the wall art product page because there's an important thing to uh, get straight here. These pages are set up specifically to sell wall art. That that's in contrast to a website provider like Squarespace that has to have their product pages work for all product types, whether you're selling artwork or toilet paper or electric scooters, right? It works for everything, which creates a master of none situation when it comes to their features. They have not considered artwork in particular, so they have not addressed the problems, the challenges with selling artwork online like we have. The big deal with selling artwork online is that there is a lot of friction. It is not a product like toilet paper or electric scooters where you want what it does and you find the one that you like and you buy it. Uh, it's a little more complicated than that. Buying art is an emotional journey. You fall in love with the work. You get to know the artist through their emails and their social media posts. You save up for it. Uh, eventually you get the wall space open, but even then you have questions like how, which piece should I select and how is it going to look with my uh, wall paint color? How is it going to work with the other uh, pieces of artwork in my collection? Will my spouse like it? How do I show it to them in the best way? Um, what are the media types available? I've never heard of this word acrylic. Is that worth looking into? Uh, what size is going to work for my space? I don't want it to look too small or, of course, too big. Uh, all of these questions are where you lose sales. People have those questions. Your website does not answer them, and they never get it answered. They leave. Uh, you cannot rely on people reaching out to you actively to ask these questions right? Your website needs to passively answer them for you all the time. Whenever that question comes up, whichever one it is, your website comes in and says, oh, here you go. Got the help for you right here. Problem solved. Keep going. Keep making the purchase, right? That is what maximizes art sales. Let's start by just looking at the layout of the page. Image on the left, buying options on the right. Not below, not somewhere down the page you need to scroll to find. Everything is uh, visible on one screen and it's all expanded. There's not drop downs. Everything is image based. This is like the express lane to checking out artwork online. Beyond that, you can offer every version of an image side by side. The open edition prints are right here. With one click, you can start shopping the limited edition prints, signed and numbered, highest quality, that sort of thing. With another click, you're over to the original version of that image. If the original is available, uh, you can step up and buy it right here. Finally, the multi-panel. This is where you break up a single image into three prints, right? So it's a huge upsell. You turn one print sale into three, very sleek and modern presentation. I love that one. If you don't offer one of these media types, like you're a photographer, so you don't have originals, uh, you wouldn't have this tab on your website. This is just showing all the possible options, but you'll set it up to whatever you actually offer. So if you don't have limited editions, it's gone. It's not on your actual site. Uh, it adapts to what you actually sell. Within these, let's look at the open edition prints. Now, the big challenge there is explaining the media types. The average art consumer does not know terms like uh, canvas gallery wrap, G-clay print, uh, metal, acrylic. They don't know what these look like. They don't know what they are. So it becomes difficult to make a smart decision um, until they do. So the website's job is to educate them very quickly and visually. So here's how we've done that. When you click on one of the media types, the uh, preview over on the left-hand side uh, adapts in a subtle way. So this adds a little bit of virtual depth to this image because we selected the canvas option. That clues people in, oh, this is that traditional thick gallery look. Beyond that, 
maybe they don't know what metal is, uh, you can hover on these tool tips here, the little question marks, and then you can launch a video. These are custom videos we've produced just for our members that show every angle of these media types and summarize the benefits. They're about 15 seconds long and they instantly create that connection of, oh, that is what I want. Very powerful. Um, beyond those buying tools, you have the visualization tools. This is for questions like, uh, I love the piece, I know I want it on metal, I'm just not sure if it's really gonna look good in my space or uh, how large I should buy. That's where the visualization tools come in. Wall preview is the, uh, the starter there. Uh, you can select a room type and you can get going very quickly, a good representation of uh, what size you need. Right, so let's step it up. The 30, that looks good. The 32 looks even better, right? You're stepping it in. We've got wall color here. These aren't random. These are the top selling uh, paint colors from last year from Benjamin Moore, Sherwin-Williams. So there's a high likelihood your buyers will actually find their real wall color right in here. Very simple, very fast. Uh, so this helps clear up some of those questions, but we take it to the next level with live room preview. You can see the button here and also on the product page right here, live preview AR. This is an augmented reality tool that allows people to use their mobile or tablet device to uh, visualize the artwork on their actual wall, not a virtual space, not a hypothetical wall, their actual wall space. So you can see in this video here, it projects it onto their wall. They can start to select the sizing and see how everything looks. They can move it around the wall space. And now there is no translation problem, right? It is not close to their wall color or whatever. It is their real actual space. The most powerful part of this feature, because other websites have this type of functionality via an app. Ours works in the web browser. There is no downloading and installing an app. They're right in the checkout process. They pop open this tool. It works on their phone. They close the tool once they're happy and they continue checking out. That is the game changing part of it. So overall, I think that does a good job of summarizing uh, a few of the features of the product page here, but that is your, your drop in the bucket overview. It goes on and on. Art Buyer AI recognizes and informs you when a likely collector has visited your site. Uh, we have tools that allow you to fire off very quick emails to welcome personally new subscribers, to uh, reach out when someone has added something to their cart but not checked out, right? Give you a shot to close that sale. The features really go on on and on QR codes, selling sheets. Um, I couldn't possibly summarize it today. Request a demo if you wanna see a little bit more. Um, but that is the engine, the, the Ferrari in your driveway. Let's talk about the fuel that goes in it, the marketing program. Uh, of course, when it comes to artists, you guys do not want to be marketing. I understand that completely. You want to be creating the work and selling it. That's it. But the in-between step is very necessary and it is marketing. So let's talk about how we make that process as painless as possible while still getting you uh, doing the work that you must do to grow a small business. The centerpiece to our marketing program, where it all comes back to, is the art marketing calendar. That is the core piece. Everything else just supports this. The marketing calendar is a daily plan that tells you exactly what to do every single day of the year. It provides you with all the email language you'll need to pull off sales, a Black Friday sale, something like that. And it gives you the advice that you need to turn your casual followers into leads, that's people on your email list, your leads into first time buyers, and your buyers into lifelong repeat collectors. We walk you through it on a daily basis. It is not overwhelming. It is not a knowledge base where you need to watch 55 videos and then just implement what they said. All you need to do is look at today. Uh, we're on Wednesday. What do they say to do? I have three tasks to complete. It should take me about 30 minutes. Let's do it. Three tasks, one, two, three, knocked it out. You have done what you need to do for your business today. It's that simple. Let's look at what this thing is. So uh, up top, attention newbies. This is a section with four steps we want our new members to complete before they get down to the full calendar. Uh, some highlights here, we have a workshop every Wednesday where our marketing team will look at your new Art Storefront's website, go through the major pages, and make sure that it's set up according to best practices from a marketing point of view, right? So before you even launch, you make sure you're gonna be closing every possible sale. Uh, we also have a campaign, a 14-day campaign that we want all 
new members to execute. It's, it's just like the calendar. It tells you what to do day by day. Post this message on Facebook and post this message on Instagram and send this email. Very simple to follow. And that uh, campaign is themed around celebrating your new website in a way that will generate you some leads and maybe some sales to right up top. So we ask everyone to do that before getting into the calendar with everyone else. Below the newbie section, we have the live workshop schedule that has uh, your look at what's coming up this week, when you can join us in Zoom in our members only workshops. We have some announcements that go here. We have a strategic overview, step three. This section is written by our CEO and our director of marketing. And in it, they give you their advice, what they would do if they were running your business this month, where your head should be at, right? So the, the calendar below is your daily bit by bit look. This section is the high level overview, what you should be thinking about your major goals for the month. And then you have the calendar itself. You can see it's day by day. Um, we have a bit of hierarchy here where we put the most important tasks in red and everything else in black. Nothing goes on here that's not important to do, right? So the black tasks are not unimportant. It's just that if you have very limited time, uh, you have family obligations, a part or full-time job, and you can't get to the entire calendar, no problem, uh, do the red stuff first. And then if you have extra time, do the black tasks. Uh, most people have no problem completing 75% uh, or more of the calendar though. It's not a huge obligation because we do so much of the work upfront for you in terms of writing the subject lines you should be sending and giving you lots of examples whenever anything uh, needs to be created. Uh, it's day by day. You've got the major task of the day, and then you've got go to tasks, a button that jumps you down the page to the full explanation of the day. It'll give you an objective for the day and then break down uh, what you need to be doing into tasks. One, two, three, do these things. Very easy to follow. Um, everything else, like I said, supports this system. So our workshops in general are supporting our members as they're following this calendar. Uh, you check in with us, you say, I did the Saturday Sunday task and I got these results. What can I do to boost them even further? Or uh, I see next week I need to be doing this, but I don't have my head around it fully yet. Can you uh, talk to me a little bit more about it? All that sort of stuff. We make sure our members are moving together through the calendar all at the same time. When we do some new right so we've recently started doing these live art shows we have a playbook on how to execute a live art show from home and our members are having some huge successes with this selling dozens of pieces from home on Instagram or Facebook live um, that is an example of something where after everyone does this together we have hundreds maybe even a thousand people running these live shows simultaneously then the following week we have uh, six or seven or eight of the people that had the most success with that strategy come on a live workshop for our members and just talk through what they did. We hear out how did they address it specifically? Was there anything that was a little different than anyone else? How did they see that success? Um, that way all of the members can hear what's working from the other members and then we go ahead and update all of our playbooks with the new learnings. So there is nothing in this program that is static, that is a dead uh, blog post style article from six years ago that may or may not be relevant today. We are updating these things on a weekly basis, checking in with our members. Uh, if enough people were that this part didn't work for them, it didn't really seem to do anything, it gets pulled out, right? We are live adjusting all of our resources so that when you join in, you get the learnings of the past several years just baked into everything. So I've talked a lot about how our members interact with us, get mentorship and consulting from us via the workshops, but we also have a venue for them to get help from each other when they need to talk shop or just get input from a whole bunch of artists really quick on a topic like, you know, how do you address shipping? How do you go about uh, tax, some kind of tax situation? All that sort of stuff. The Small Wins Facebook group is the place for that. It's private just for our members, and that is where they go to ask for help, share their, their small wins, as we call it, you know, all the little success successes that stack up into a successful business. Uh, does anyone know how to patent or copyright a design? Get some help from our members on that. So this is the place to go uh, when you need to uh, quickly pull a huge group of people uh, that, that have gotten further than you, right? That already have gotten where you wanna go uh, and have the learnings, the quick learnings that they can summarize for you.
Between all of these resources that all fall back on the calendar, you have a marketing system that keeps you in line, that keeps you moving, that does not simply present you with 1,000 hours of content and asks you to explore it at your own pace, figure out for yourself which things you should be following and which things you should ignore. Uh-uh. This is about the calendar. It's about uh, cutting out all the time you waste thinking about what you should and shouldn't be doing. That is the time saver uh, here, the big game changer. You no longer need to think about all the possible things. We've already done that. We've highlighted what you should be doing, the best return on your time. All right, that is my uh, rant. I was, I was gonna say short rant. I know it wasn't short, but it's very difficult to compress everything we have going on into uh, a format like this. So thanks for listening. Uh, again, the website is your engine. The marketing program is the fuel for that engine. Uh, so with that said, let's get into the consulting. Uh, I think we're all on the same page now, so let's do that drain unclogging I talked about in the beginning. Uh, I'll turn it over to our hosts. All right, thank you, pre-recorded Taylor. Um... So we can get into it, and, and I'll want to get into your questions in just a minute. You can see that Chris has already got his hand raised, so he's the first up. So you can raise your hands. You can come on video. If you hate video, you can just do audio. Uh, if you just prefer to throw your question in the chat, you can do that. Uh, we live stream these things on all the various different social platforms. So if you're watching on Facebook or you're watching on Instagram or, or not on Instagram because it's not on Instagram because you have to have a phone to do Instagram. But if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, um, then you can leave a question and I will get to those ones too. Uh, the questions are always my favorite part. You know, I've been running a whole bunch of these for a while now. Um, you know, I, I think I probably talked to between like 150 and 200 50, somewhere around there, artists and photographers on a weekly basis between customers and non-questions. And so you do that long enough and pattern recognition becomes a real thing. And I can, I can say blanket statements pretty conclusively that, you know, for 99% of the people on this call, you think you have a website problem and you think you're here to see what we can't solve your website problem and you don't have a website problem. None of you do. Um, what do I mean by that? I could be the one to do it. I will take your entire art, art, art collection, all of it, and move it right now. I'll even pay for it to any website service provider, ours included. Uh, I'll do all of it for you. We'll turn it on, and guess what? You're going to be exactly where you are before because you don't have a website problem. Artists and photographers, by and large, do not have a website problem. They have a traffic problem. They have an attention problem. They do not have people on their email list. They do not have people on their social followings. They are not marketing regularly. So even with a new website, wherever it is, if you've got nobody coming to it, you've got a problem. It's sort of like, you know, you're, you think your problem is a, a website problem, and it's sort of like, yeah, okay. So you, you, let's, make it, let's use the restaurant analogy. So you need a new restaurant. You think you need a new restaurant. The problem is, is that your restaurant is on the middle of Main Street in Death Valley in summer. No one's coming in. No one's coming into the restaurant. That's the problem. It's not the restaurant. Um, so that's number one. Number two big picture underscored by the fact that we're, you know, in continuing COVID hangover times, um, you have to understand the business model. And if you want to make it as an artist or photographer, you don't have to get a whole lot right as long as you don't get this one thing wrong. What is the one thing? Understanding the business model. You need to be selling DTC, direct to consumer. No middlemen in between. You keep all the customer data. You're able to market to those customers in perpetuity. Critically, critically important. Uh, part of growing an art business. And I think, you know, prior to COVID, a lot of people had reliable offline revenue sources. Perhaps they had galleries that were selling well. Uh, perhaps they had, you know, they were working the uh, the art shows and fair circuit and going to all those. And, and you know, those have sort of dried up and, and don't show any signs of coming back anytime soon. Perhaps you have your art up on one of the marketplace websites. That could be a Redbubble, a Fine Art America, a Saatchi, an Etsy. Um, you don't get to keep any of your customer data. You can't market to those people in perpetuity. So, you know, if any of those other additional sources are working for you, fantastic. But it can't be in lieu of building and growing your own business. So that's a critically, critically important thing. Um, you know, at the end of the day, yes, we are a website company. Yes, we offer a website solution. Yes, it's a pretty nifty website solution. But that's actually not what we do. What we, what we really are is we're an art business university. We teach marketing all year long. It never stops, it never will stop because it's the single solitary biggest and, and most real problem that artists and photographers have. Um, and you know, we can get into the validating your art, which is also a critically important part. But I wanted to 
you know, we put in our marketing copy today about the Kardashians and I wanted to just share something with you guys. Um, first of all, you know, not that I care what anybody thinks about me, but I could care less about the Kardashians. Okay. I know very little about the Kardashians aside from a few circus things and what you pick up. But what I, what I saw, which was interesting lately, because I don't think my wife really watches the show, but she keeps up with everything is they've had a long running show, I guess for 14 years. And they've recently not re-upped the show. So they didn't renew the contract. And over the course of the weekend, you know, we were driving, I, I went out of town this week and we were driving home. My wife told me this and I was like, you gotta send me this article the minute she said it. Kim Kardashian tells David Letterman she makes more money on Instagram than a single season of Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Apparently they got paid $4.2 million each uh, per show on, on, or per season rather, on The Kardashians and they make more money on Instagram. Straight up. They have so many Instagram followers that they make more money on Instagram. Now, let's get away from a subject material that's completely vapid like the Kardashians. I love watching soccer and I look at this. Highest earning football players on Instagram, and it's not just about Instagram, but Cristiano Ronaldo um, gets paid $975,000 per post, uh, equating to yearly earnings of $47.8 million. I think he makes more money as a soccer player, okay, from Instagram than he does from his actual salary at the team that he plays for in Italy called Juventus. And it goes down the list, right? There's Lionel Messi, David Beckham, Neymar, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Ronaldinho, Pogba, and who knows, you know, these numbers are always loosey-goosey whenever it's like, you know, knowing for sure how much they're making. But the larger, the larger point in it all is your art business, okay, and this is true for every single solitary person on this call, can be broken down into a mathematical equation. How big it's going to be can be a mathematical equation. At the top of it, we have, have you validated your art? Have you sold your art or photography to people not named mother, brother, sister, family, friends, okay? If you have, then you validated your art. Your art will sell to strangers, essentially, right? And that's a critically, critically important step to take. Once you've taken that step, and the market has told you your art will sell, you get into your marketing, okay? And we can come back to the validation thing in, in a second because there's levels of validation. Just because you've sold art to strangers doesn't necessarily mean you've picked a niche for your art, a style for your art, that is going to be a big enough market to grow into a healthy, sizable business. But let's say you're done with the validation. If you're done with the validation, it doesn't matter if it's Chris here who's got his camera on, uh, Patrick here at Art Storefronts, or Amazon.com. All of our businesses come down to one, one equation, and it's a very, very simple mathematical equation, okay, the mass. A well-run sale, okay, has two components in an equation times attention. Let me talk about the components. It is literally just an incentive, which is the discount, okay, plus scarcity, which is the discount is going to end, i.e. deal ends in 48 hours, 72 hours. It is those two, Summed, multiplied by the attention you have. What do I mean by the attention? The people on your email list, the social following you have, the people that you can market to, perhaps you're doing snail mail, whatever attention you have, that literally is what equals the size of the art business or photography business that you will grow. Straight up, full stop. And what's interesting about that equation is it's, again, it's the same for every single solitary person on this call right now. It's the same for us at Art Storefronts. It's the same for Amazon.com. What did Amazon just get finished running? Prime Day. What was it? It was a whole bunch of stuff on sale. Element one of the equation, the discount. It was scarcity, i.e. Prime Day ends in 48 hours. Element two of the equation. And multiplied by attention. In Amazon's case, they have more of it than just about anybody. Except for Alibaba, by the way, which is even bigger, um, believe it or not. So, you know, that's the equation. That's what Amazon's working on. They're working on that equation. That's what our equation is at Art Storefronts. We're working on that equation, and that's what your equation needs to be too because it is literally how big your business is going to grow is just quite simply that equation. So tying it back to you know, uh, uh, the Kardashians or the soccer players, it's like they're making the equation work for them just based on their social media following because that's the attention that they have, right? Now, obviously, their numbers are huge, and you know, none of us are probably likely to get to that level, but the equation remains the same. And it's not just about Instagram, it's the attention you have. And that's the biggest problem you have because everyone can very easily get the first two elements of the equation. Discount, scarcity, easy. I could teach you to set that up in 20 minutes and you've got it. 
but the attention piece is what we all need to work on. And that's, that's where the marketing comes in. That's the whole ball game. So that's my rant for today. Uh, I'm going to get right into the questions. Chris, we're going to start with you or Christopher, sorry. And, and then Pamela, I see your question in the chat. I'll, I'll go to yours next. And David, I see your hand up too. So go ahead, Christopher. How are you doing? All right. I'm doing well. How are you? Good, 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 good. Uh, so my question comes to, I guess, uh, better lead generation. Yes. Um, I've, you know, quote unquote validated my arc, but mm -hmm. that the amount of pieces I've sold is low, but the prices that they sell for are high. Um, are you above 2000 or below 2000 total, total art sold? Oh, uh, above. Okay. So yeah, I would, I would definitely call your art validated at that point without question. Now you get into are marketing you talking pieces or dollars, dollars, sorry. dollars. Oh yeah. Do dollars or above. Yeah. It's, and, and, um, and, and that was not to mom or dad or brother or friend or no, none of them can afford it. Good, good. <laughs> Good. I love it. Um, so, uh, I mean, I just started listening to your podcast uh, uh, probably Friday, wow. I think. Or how'd, Thursday, how'd you find so. it, by the way? Uh, Spotify. Uh, I listened to like a lot of Gary Vee, and then I was mm -hmm. looking for something that was more tailored towards art. I looked up art marketing, and mm -hmm. other than things that were like the art of marketing, yeah, BS, nonsense. Yeah, like yeah. The only one. So good. Awesome. Um, love that. So, I, I mean, my. The sales have come from like a variety of places. Like, um, re, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, I used to like DM interior designers like all the time. I nailed one, my first like larger sale, uh, larger. I mean, it was like it was my second sale, but it was like seven hundred bucks. You got you got that technique from Gary Vee, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, and it worked. And but yeah. that was really the only success I saw through that. And mm -hmm. then um, so I was running like Facebook ads. I had no idea what I was doing, but yeah. I, I like I landed a. Fourteen thousand dollar bar top job, nice. so like, and it's like an art bar top with the the resin and all that stuff. So sick. Um, I, the the dots that I've been able to connect so far with my clients, at least, is that they're you know um, high earning individuals, uh, and they are fans of realism because I try and bring realistic or um, uh, I don't know, how to, yeah essentially just realism i mean these ones are like more abstract i mean mm -hmm. this one's got like uh real sand and shells in it and i try and create waves and whatever else but mm -hmm. um so it my my problem is consistently finding the people that are i guess that earn enough money that they can spend enough money i mean this mm -hmm. piece right behind me is a monument valley piece it cost me a thousand dollars to make and i just made it because i had a bug in my head about making it so mm -hmm. i did but um, everything that had basically all of my sales other than like one or two or like two or three have been like custom order. They see something I make and they're like, Oh, can you do this? And I'm like, yes, even though I have no idea, I just do it. Like, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. um, uh, if that makes sense, like I like doing stuff that's like different every time, which makes it a lot harder for marketing. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of, I guess the biggest thing is like how to, like better lead generation for uh, people that can afford to pay, you know, a thousand to for sure. fifteen thousand dollars. Yep, per yep, piece. yep. The the good old the good old fashioned high net worth uh, individual <laughs> where, uh, qual. Where are the rich people? Yeah, where are the rich people at? <laughs> and you know, and when you think about it, like aside from like the dollar store, name me a business that doesn't want to find more high net worth people, right? Oh yeah. So yeah, it's know. you know it's a, it's a very difficult problem. One, I would say. Given the price points where you're at and, and, and where you're at um, with revenue, you need to sign up. It's a no-brainer for you. I can help you out tremendously. And, and I say that, you know, fine. There might be a subtle sales pitch in there. I have to do my job. But I'm not kidding. We could help you because all you need to do is market consistently. <laughs> but let me tell you, the, the answer, answer the question in, in, the, in the better old-fashioned way. Everyone's, everyone's desire is to find the high net worth individuals, right? And are there some hacky ways that you can do that and go about that? Yes, there are. I've, I've tried them consistently throughout my career. We give you a Facebook example, right? Early on with Facebook, because the targeting is so good, you could target followers only of Whole Foods. Mm. Because if somebody likes Whole Foods, they're on average Average yearly income, $65,000 and above, right? So you could go into Facebook and you could say target users of Whole Foods and use that as a layer in additional targeting. And, and I could give you 50 different examples of hacky crap like that. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. It's a waste of time. And let me explain why. Because it's not the highest ROI way, return on investment, time, energy, treasure, to find them. i got to get my pen out. Everyone's followers end up becoming a bell curve. And that's just how it goes. 
bell curve starts down here. You have lower income people that are never going to buy anything, but they'll like, comment, and share. And you know, maybe one day they'll graduate. And then you have your normal top of the bell, you know, lower middle class, middle class, upper middle class, and then you have your high net worth people down here on the end, right? And what happens is, is that you get going consistently on your marketing and you find the high net worth individuals by doing so consistently all year long. You keep growing your fans, you keep growing your followers, it's constantly a bell curve, but that's the most effective way to get them I, that I've seen, period. And it, you know, it's funny because we have a twice weekly Zoom session just like this for our customers, we call it office hours. And you know, everybody's always asking in office hours, like how do I find the high net worth individuals? How do I find the high end you know, interior decorators, right? And a gal was on and she's like, I just closed my biggest sale ever. It was a $65,000 sale to an interior designer. And obviously like, okay, let's unmute you. I wanna hear this story. How did you do it? How'd you do it? Did you target uh, interior designers individually? No. Uh, did you follow a bunch of them on house and send them all 50 messages a day? No. What did you do? Uh, I've been posting regularly on Instagram and the interior designer's daughter has been following me for six months and told her mom. How the heck are you gonna duplicate that? Yeah. Duplicate that strategy, right? You don't. And so the, the, the larger point is, is it, it, you get there by regular and consistent marketing. That's it. Your price points will dictate yeah. the rest All of right. it, but you have to just, you, you, you know, I, I, I use this analogy of you have to be able to do 100 push-ups, right? And, and the analogy yeah. is you have to be able to do 100 push-ups in one sitting, right? That's hard. What is 100 push-ups? It's the set of marketing muscles you need to grow a business. You gotta be capturing emails consistently all year long. You gotta be emailing the emails consistently all year long. Uh, you need to run the sales at the appropriate time to run sales and understand all the mechanics of running the sale, how the email works with social. Uh, at your volume, you need to start running Facebook warm ads. I'm gonna have a pretty in-depth tutorial on that. I can get into that later if you like. Uh, you should be having live art shows, both live art oh, shows oh. and flash sales. You'd be posting to the socials on a regular basis. All of those collectively are the 100 push-ups, right? And every business in today's day and age needs to be able to do that to effectively market. And that's what we teach. It's every single solitary person's problem, straight up. All right. Uh, um, you know, I heard you talking about the Facebook, war, you know, the warm Facebook ads yeah. uh, yep. and the podcast and stuff. So, you know, uh, it is something I need to do. Um, it's, you know, I, I don't have like a massive following. It's like 700 on Facebook mm -hmm. and then like 4,500 or a little less on Instagram. Yep. Most of my followers on Instagram like I would other artists, I artists, woodworkers, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So, Everybody you know, says that. I, but that doesn't mean that, you know, one of those can't have a friend that wants something. Ex exactly. Almost, right. So, I mean, they like they comment, uh, they share. And it's just, you know, every business has its nuances and things that it has to deal with. For some reason, all artists and photographers want to do is just follow other artists and photographers. <laughs> it's like, it's like, no, I want the buyers. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't have an email list, so that's, you know, big. I don't have huge a website. Yeah. Uh, also I like tried to do my own thing. It was garbage. Yeah. It started as like a blog and I was doing the idiot thing where I like paid for a dot com and the hosting and all that. Yeah. But uh, I, I let it expire. But yeah. So, I mean, the, I mean, I say, I know everybody's looking for high net worth individuals and stuff like that. And obviously my biggest concern with not finding them would be just due to the price it costs me to make them like that, that piece isn't that big. It's, uh, 24 by 14, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. And it cost me like almost $400 to make. Yeah. Like this one cost me a thousand to make. This one cost me like nearly 700 mm -hmm. to make just because of the sheer cost of like the resin and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but my, so, and that's, that's just not, that's, that, that's not like, a problem in the slightest, by the way, all that, okay. all that tells me is that you have an incredible story to tell on each one of those pieces about how painstaking <laughs> it was and how to combine the materials and how many hours went into it and all the rest, like, not a problem. Seriously, not a problem yeah. at all. And you've shown it's not a problem. You, you sold it, right? There's demand for this already. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, so like, one of the concerns, I actually had to request a demo phone call or whichever mm -hmm. this morning. Uh, I was in the middle of working on a piece. But, so I, that bar top was um, obviously not a piece of wall art. Yeah. And the one piece I'm working on now is a desk. So, you know, I want to be able to venture largely into like desks and bar sure. tops yep. and tables and you can do it all day. that's the way i originally started making them but people wanted them as wall art too so i was like yeah you can hang it on your wall it's a tabletop but sure yeah i mean it so our our site is completely set up to sell wall art right there's there's mm -hmm. no two ways about that but it's also just an e-commerce site at the end of the day 
So no different than any of the other competition out there. You can put yeah. whatever item up you want, right? Um, and, and you have to have it. You have to have the website and you have to have the ability to take sales on the website. And, you know, I always, I always do my little, my little three prong hand deal, which you'll hear on the podcast, but I'll give it to you anyway. Best way to sell art or photography, trick question, in person, face to face. Of course, that's what it is. It's never going to change. Got to have a website though. Why? You're geographically fixed on this planet and you need to sleep. So the website gets up, it has your art on it. It can sell concurrently to thousands at a time. It can do it night and day. It can take orders when you're not around. So we need to have that. The live video piece, though, is this new hybrid in between where it allows you to hold your work, merchandise your work, talk about it, whether it's one-to-one or one-to-many. It gets as close as possible to the in-person selling experience. And so it's a critical component of it, too. And you could do some really fun stuff with that. But you, your, your only problem is marketing and pressure over time, doing it consistently for a number of years. Sounds to me like you have a healthy business on your hands and there's no shortcut to the marketing. There never will be a shortcut to the marketing. You got to do the marketing. It, it, is there a, a feature on the site? Um, I, I haven't explored a whole, a whole ton just yet, but That's right. is there a feature that lends itself to custom orders or can there be a thing? Because like I said, most of the people that order pieces, they're like, oh, I like that. Can you make a, you know, there, there, there is, there is, but you don't need it. And I'll tell you why. Um, once you reach a certain price point, okay, um, and, it, and, it, and it's sort of true regardless of what industry you're in, once you reach a, a, a true price point, and I'll give you sort of the, the SaaS analogy because that's what we do, right? Like once you hit like the $2,000 mark or maybe even the $1,500 mark, you have to have sales staff. That's like a hard and fast rule because people don't just come on and buy something that expensive without talking to somebody. They just don't. The conversion rates are really extremely low. I mean, yeah, you could say like Tesla. Oh, yeah. You could it's say like a Tesla. Been through a phone call. Yeah. So and it, and it always will be through a phone call, and you always yeah. want it to be through a phone call because, like, look, until you get to the point when you're doing a thousand of these a day, you have time for the phone call. That's the highest ROI thing you could possibly be doing, right? So yes, we have the technology to do it, but. You want to just get people on the phone. You want to do a live video. You want to talk them through the process, show them through some of your things, take the order right there, take all the friction out of the system, and they get to know you. So, you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, all we care about is that our customers are successful. And, you know, the, our minds and, you know, call it like the tropes or the nonsense that we've been sold. Like most artists and photographers are like, oh, man, if I could just have a website that would do all of this for me. And it's like, no, no. I need to tell you, no, you're going to do this on the phone in a consultative state, and it's going to work out incredibly well for you. The last thing you want to do is, you know, you could spend an hour of your time and get the sale immediately today, or you can send them to the website and have them bumble around for a week and a half. Like at your price point, you're going to sell consultatively all the time. And yes, we have tools that will help you do that and let them visualize and everything else, and that's all well and good. But at the end of the day, if you're selling $2,500 pieces and up, it's going to be through the phone, not going away. The website will speed things up. But you're going to be oh, selling. Yeah, no. yeah. I don't mind. Do I like yeah. doing the phone calls? Um, yeah. It's just it, it to get most of the people that inquire always inquire over the internet. Be it like the desk I'm doing from LinkedIn, the the bar top was from Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, something was from Instagram. But like to what they're always like, oh, how much and blah blah, and and either it's a waste of my time because they don't want to get on the phone call, or when I give them like, you know, broad like. Hey, it's going to cost between this and this, you know, let's talk on the phone so we can go, you know, whatever I say. And um, they're like, oh, wow, I wasn't thinking it'd be that much. I thought I'm looking for like X and their X, like 99% of the time, never even covers the cost of materials. So do you know how many, do you know how many leads we have to get as a business to get some quality candidates that are actually in the zone for every hundred, we probably have 10 quality. So yeah, those are those are just bad leads. Probably, yeah. Those are just bad leads. It's all good. It's part of it. That's just that's just the nature of the biz, right? All you right, know, different yeah. than you having a retail store, and it's like ten people walked in that day, and only one person was qualified. You still got to do. You still got to do it. It's just that's just the, that's just the uh, the business. That's the grind. You know. All right. Yeah. You all you have is a marketing problem. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I post consistently and everything like that, but I need to start doing, I guess, the warm Facebook advertising. You need, you need and, to do all uh, of it. Yeah, you need to do all of it. And, you know, that's, that's sort of the beauty of what we do is, one, uh, myself, my team are really good at marketing. We've been doing it a long time. We, we have a great understanding of it. Two, um, it, you know, you don't take my word for it on that. Two, I've got 4,400 or 4,300 customers' websites on a platform, and, I, and some of them are doing extremely well. I have access mm -hmm. to all their data. And so I look at it, and then I call them, and I say, how are you doing this? 
and then I extract what actually works because, you know, art and photography, um, it, they're so nuanced in the way that the sales go down, right? It's not like a normal e-commerce transaction. Right? No, like, no way. Yeah. No, no, it's not. So it's it's very nuanced in how it sells. And so we just, we have really, really good marketing education and, you know, group trainings that we go through. And it's, there's no secret sauce, dude. It is literally just marketing consistently and never coming off and focusing on the high ROI to the exclusion of the shiny object nonsense, right? Really hard, really hard to ignore the shiny object nonsense. It comes at you all the time. Heard TikTok, I heard TikTok's awesome. Let's get on TikTok, spend a bunch of time learning TikTok. No, don't do that, okay? I know this other stuff works and I don't know TikTok works. So don't even look at TikTok, okay? Unless you're doing that for fun. So we're able to make a bunch of value judgments like that. Um, that'll, that'll keep you focused and keep you on the path, but stay list, stay listening to the podcast too. If you're not, if you're not convinced, I think, um, you know, you could, you could listen to literally every episode of that podcast and they're, they're all still valuable aside from the messenger stuff, which, you know, that's sort of, uh, out for now because it, it they changed the rules, which sucks. Facebook does that sometimes. If, if, uh, cause every project I do, I do like, I get pictures taken and stuff. So if, is there, I guess a feature on the site that like, ha you know, the desk I'm working on now, like mm -hmm. it's a golf themed desk from Augusta national. And, um, very cool. It, you know, I, I DM'd a, a bunch of pages and one of them like shared it. And I wound up getting like 200 golf people. A bunch of them were reaching out and asking how much and stuff like that. So, um, is there a place on the page where it would have like things that I've done essentially? Oh yeah. You can, it, it's, um, yeah, it's like any website. You can put anything on there. Yeah. yeah. Anything you want. Okay. All of it. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Those are good questions. Okay. I'm going to go to David next and then Pamela, I'll answer yours after that. Go ahead, David. You're up. You'll need to unmute yourself. I'll tell you when you get it. It's the, the mic. Yep. You got it. Can you hear me? Yep. I gotcha. Great. Hey, um, thanks very much for putting this on. Appreciate it very much. Oh, thanks for saying that. My pleasure. I'm um, just kind of looking at it. Um, I've kind of been doing some art for the last, I'd say like the last 10 years, I got interested in doing art. And I started off by uh, doing live edge tables and that kind of stuff, kind of like what it sounds like Christopher is doing. Okay. Um, and then I got into, I live in Palm Springs area, Coachella area, Palm Desert. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot of high value, high net worth people living here in the winter time. So you do. We kind of like that. But Tom, um, I was there this weekend, by the way. My mother in law, my mother in law lives on Cook. Oh, does she really? Yep. That's like two, two miles from here. Yep. We live in Bermuda Dunes. Yep. No, well. Excellent. Um, so then I got, you know, the windmills up in the pass? Yeah, of course. So I was driving through there and I was thinking, uh, I was born in LA and I thought, you know, if I could get a hold of one of those old windmill blades, that might be interesting legs for these tables I'm making. Anyways, this was like 10 years ago, seven years ago. Wound up getting a a, a a friend of mine whose dad was in uh, the windmill business, and I got uh, a 20 year old blade that was 50 feet long. Cut it up into sections and started making furniture out of that. That was very interesting. Cool. And um, so then using the epoxy on the live edge table tabletops, mm -hmm. started playing around with that and pouring it on MDF, and I've gotten some free the incredible looking pieces. I mean, a lot of people have seen these. Um, one of my questions is, and, and I'd like to, I'm, I'm seriously thinking about going on with you guys, but um, one of my questions is if you're using, if you're, if you're doing like resin as your primary medium, mm -hmm. can you have, can you take photographs of that and sell prints off of that or no? Yeah, you certainly could. You know, it, it, it'd be on a case by case basis. I mean, obviously, it's not going to capture the utter beauty of right. of what it is. You know, yeah. it, it it it's interesting because um, if you look at, and I'm going to show you, I got to change my background. So this is this is my buddy, and he's he's been a he's been a customer for a long time, and and you can probably almost tell when you look at my background now how much impasto he uses. But I mean, sometimes it's like coming like six inches off the. I mean, not six inches, but like three or four inches off the canvas. Like it's crazy, right? Like when he finishes one of these paintings, it takes him, I think on some of the big ones, like a month and a half for it to actually dry, right? So for him, you know, 
Yes, he sells some prints occasionally, right? But what people really want to see are, 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 is that texture, right? And so what he did is he introduced a hybrid product, okay? He gets a canvas print, he pulls it into his studio, and he spends about 15 minutes putting in pasto on the top of it, and he sells them between like 800 and 1200 bucks, and those are doing extremely well for him, right? So you can experiment with the print, you know, whether, what, I'm looking at Chris's work in the background because his camera's on, you know, he can photograph that stuff. It's probably a little bit more complicated given the glares that it can have on it and, and give it a shot. You could do the same too. The prints will either really resonate or not. If they don't, I would definitely figure out a way to like add a little bit of that texture that you can to a print and then you have like a, an in-between, you know, hybrid original slash print, but you can certainly try that out. Yeah, and then you could just clear coat that with resin. Yep. That'd be cool. Yeah, it'd be really cool. And and it's like that's such a higher value piece than just a you know a canvas print or whatever, like or or a metal print, whatever you ended up putting on it. So that would be that'd be amazing. Glitter in there. That'd be cool. Yeah, it'd be really cool. Excellent. Okay, um, I've I've got a request in for a demo later on. I hope we can uh, get together. My daughter's with me, and she's going to be uh, kind of running this end of it, and I'll be doing the. The artwork actually. So um, I don't know how quickly. Uh, uh, and you, by the way, you and Chris should uh, uh, share each other's contact info because the odds of two guys being resin guys on the same call is is pretty rare. You guys, you guys should talk shop. I mean, I think I think it'd be helpful. Chris, Chris is there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, how do you want to do that, Chris? Do you want to just jot down my email? Yeah. Use the chat. Use the chat box, and then and then you guys can take it from there. Very good. Okay, that that answers my questions. Um, I got one. I, I have one question for you that's super selfish, and and please indulge you guys. Indulge me for two seconds. You know the the vegetable market that's on like Monroe or whatever. It's the one right on the corner of the field. Yep. When does that thing open back up? Do you know? <laughs> I don't. You know, honestly, I don't know if it's closed because of COVID, because it's usually open year round, right? Were you? Did you drive by there? I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying for that thing to reopen up. I suppose I could call them, but they're terrible on the phone. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Chris put Chris put his email in the chat. You got to get his email. It might uh, be because of the COVID. Yeah, I think it might be, or you know, could could be because of the heat too. You never know. You never know. Could be yeah. either. <laughs> okay, talking to you. And I look forward to ta hearing from you more. Likewise. Thanks, David. Um, okay, Mark. I see your your hands up. I'm going to answer Dorothy's or Pamela's question here. And she, and she says, would you address how best to handle commission-based work? I do portraits to people in places, homes and business storefronts. I actually think that's a really interesting niche because the, you know, the, um, the picture of a home that hangs inside of the home is just a killer niche. Uh, I, I've seen that in a ton of houses. And, and the long and the short of it, Pamela, is nothing changes. You still have to market and grow that business. You still have to show the work that you're doing. The fact that it's commission-based changes nothing at all, literally nothing at all. Um, yeah, you alternate your language a little bit, but we have, you know, it's interesting. We have one gal on the, on the platform and, you know, I'm going to say this, Pamela, she's not normal. Okay. She's very good at what she does, but you need to follow her immediately because she does hand drawn, okay. Hand drawn, uh, uh, people's pets. Right. And she calls April, get, get, um, her website. I think it's bunnypigsart.com, but April, will you search it and put it in the chat so Pamela can have it? She does massive commission releases, okay? And she does like limited edition. I'm only gonna do 50 or 75. They're hand drawn. It takes a ton of time. And she and she drops that sale and she sells like 30 to 60,000 every time she does it. And she has an incredible system. I think you need to follow her. Not kidding, Pamela. She's really, really good. April put it in the chat. Um, there it is. Okay, so her name's Allison Cantrell. What I want you to do, no joke, Pamela, is go to her website, put your email in the box. That you're, that you're interested, right? And then get on her email list and like look at her funnel and everything that she does. It is mega impressive. And I think you could absolutely do that with the homes too, right? Because um, I'm assuming you don't have to go to every home. Sometimes they're just sending you a photograph. So you can still do that business nationwide. You you, you just have to work on your marketing same as, same as the rest of us. It doesn't matter that it's commission-based in the slightest. And I see you turned your camera on. If you want to unmute yourself, you can, you'll have to hit the microphone icon to bottom left-hand corner. I'll tell you when you get it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Hey. Um, yeah, I work from I work from photos. I mean, mm -hmm. I'd love to go to you know Boca Raton or you know the Pismo Beach mm -hmm. and, and and do it. But really, photos are the best way for mm -hmm. me to do somebody's home and even a portrait. I'd love to have them sit for a little bit, 
and then do some photos and then, but that's not always geographically possible. No. So thank you. Um, I, I agree about the marketing. Um, they also do, I also do classes and workshops. I, mm -hmm. I do classes in Tuscany and classes, I do workshops in Tuscany and classes in San Francisco. And mm -hmm. I don't know if your um, overall um, web design. Oh, no, ab absolutely. You can do it. But you're, you're doing them physically in person rather than digitally. Yes. Have you, ex right. have you experimented with doing them digitally? Uh, just recently, I got hired to do uh, a dozen Zoom classes for a downtown business club that's been closed because of COVID mm -hmm. and they're trying to offer their members some things. So I did um, 90 minute drawing classes and then watercolor classes and then, and then uh, uh, portraits. Yep. I, it was good. It was good. I, I learned, I learned at least as much as they learned. And um, I, I got to the point where I realized that it was very important to have the students draw and paint. Yes. During the class. So yes. that they were doing something instead of staring at their screens. It was really I, I thought it was very productive. I got a lot of good good feedback. Yeah, I, I would I would strongly encourage you to explore taking that model you have all digital and running it on a regular basis. You know, one uh -huh. of the one of the common misconceptions that we get pigeonholed in that you know, we're some sort of business that only cares for artists and photographers to sell more prints. Nothing could be further from the truth. We don't care where your revenue comes from. All we want is more success. And so we have another gal on the platform and you need to follow what she's doing. Um, her name's Betty Franks Kraus. And, and don't worry, we're gonna email all of this stuff okay. to you guys after the fact. And she's selling classes, live painting classes, like teaching people to paint, and she is killing it. That woman is doing fantastic. I'm and really glad to hear that because my assumption is that because there's so much content on YouTube mm -hmm. for free that to charge for a class seems almost counterproductive. Oh, erroneous, erroneous, yeah, okay. erroneous. I'm yep. Excited to hear that. Yeah. But, you know, like it, it's so hard to get any one aspect of a business working, right? Like uh -huh. you clearly have the class thing working. So if I'm running your business, I'm looking at that going, hmm. We remain in COVID times. People are especially now looking for things that they can do because there's no events and there's, there's no places to go. Like you were geographically limited in offering this class in person. What if you opened it up and started marketing it? What, are the, what could those numbers look like? I mean, on a Zoom session, you could have international students, right? Yeah. Like you could yeah. charge $50 a class, $100 a class, experiment with it, have it be multi-session. Like that could potentially be a huge business. It could potentially be a huge business. So. I think there's I think there's some very exciting elements to that. And we can the, we can definitely the help you. Aspect of it that's very saleable is to have um, some individual feedback so that yeah. if you're in the class and you do this sketch or portrait during the week that you get some one-on-one -on -one feedback. Like you're saying uh, that live video piece is one of the three, you know, legs of that stool. Yes. It's not perfect, but um, people want feedback. They, yeah. Oh, you better, you better, you better believe it. Constructive critique. Yeah, it goes. So I, I love that you picked up the three legs of the stool, which is a hugely important component, but it, it, it changes a little bit. And then let me just explain to you how. So there is a massive industry out there for digital do-it-yourself learning. Okay. There's uh -huh. lynda.com and Kajabi and Masterclass. And uh, what's the other one I always forget about? It's right here. Look, look it doesn't matter. The, the stats across the board are roughly about 30%. So 30% of the people that buy the class on how to run ads to sell art and photography on Facebook, 30% complete it. Why? Because learning like that in a vacuum is not an effective way to do it. You have to add the in-person teaching. And so pre-COVID, all we did for our customers was like I put out the podcast, I created these amazing playbooks, which are like step by step on how to run a sale and how to do email marketing, how to run a live art show and all these various different things. And I would I would email my entire customer base and I would say, guys, here it is up to date. Here's how to run your Black Friday sale. Go. Right. And if I sent that to 100 people, maybe I would get 20 to take action all the way to completion. Fast forward to the start of the pandemic, we started doing these weekly Zoom calls where we teach the thing in person. And now out of that 100 people, I have like 75 executing on it because it's just so much more effective. And you need to, you need to learn with the group of your peers, 
where everyone's coming with their questions, which are likely the same questions you have. You got hung up on one aspect of it. Uh, you're losing your mind about the technical piece, and, and, and I tell you, no, don't worry. This is very easy. Let me show you. You need to be able to have the screen shares. Sometimes you need somebody to be able to take a look at your website. Uh, you need to hear from people that had a really big sale running the exact playbook, and collectively, that is just such a powerful way to teach. And you know, I, 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 I've said this on previous calls, but this live video component, and yes, I realize it's not new. Video has been around for a long time, but there's been a lot of things happening, right? Like you, you don't notice the worms turning when you're on it. People's bandwidth has been getting better and better and better. The technology that delivers these calls is better and better and better. I mean, on these Zoom sessions, I, I've run 300 of them without a single solitary technical glitch. Early on, I got hacked a couple of times, but like everyone's able to get on. Like a lot of our customer base is very untechnologically savvy, and yet they're able to get on every time and ask questions. So the mental model that we're operating under, which is a weird one, is all this live video allows you to do is take your business and open it on Main Street USA, okay, of the internet. Main Street USA of the internet, which is really Main Street worldwide of the internet. And we're moving to a scenario where our business is gonna be open on live video like a retail store would be, nine to five. We're already almost there in all honesty. We run, so we run office hours, which is twice a week, which is those sessions are on average about two hours and three minutes, so there's four hours a week that we're, we're live, okay? We have four sessions a week, which is just our tech support people on calls like this. You pop in any point in time when you have a tech support issue, there's somebody there, you talk to them. That's probably an additional eight hours of video a week, so live video, so now we're at 12 hours. We have a marketing launch workshop that we run twice a week. And the marketing launch workshop is you got your website live, you want somebody to take a look at it. Our technicians break it down, tell you what you did right, tell you what did wrong. You're not following best practices here. You get your tech support questions answered. Then we also have an onboarding workshop, which is right when you get signed up, how to go through everything. If I sum that all up, we are probably at 30 hours where we're live and on video. If I throw these sessions in, of which we're running them three days a week, we're probably wow. almost at 40 hours. And I think it's just going to keep ratcheting up and up and up. I mean, contemplate our business and then, and then, and then pivot it to your business. Um, I would email you. I would try to get you with a Facebook ad. I try to have you come to my site and read a blog post, right? And then I email you, bombard you for the next 30 months. Here's my podcast. Here's my YouTube video. Here's my this. Here's my that. How much more effective has it been for you to come on this call, Pamela, and get to talk to me directly in two seconds, right? Yeah. I took something that was going to take three months, and I just truncated it down into 20 minutes. Like, it's just so much more effective, and it's the exact same scenario for you guys in selling art. And so I, I'm, I'm so bullish on this concept of the live art show, whether it's one-to-one, -one, whether I visited Mark's site today, and Mark instantaneously sends me a message. He's like, hey, Patrick, thanks so much for interested in my piece. Um, if you want to jump on a live video call, I could show it to you, talk about my process, and I could show you some other pieces if you like. Now I'm in a live video call with Mark, and I don't care if it's like, you know, the free iPhone to iPhone, whatever they call that, iMessage, or FaceTime, or if we're doing it on Messenger, if we're using Zoom. Now I'm having a face-to-face -face conversation with the artist that's on the other side of the planet, and I got to like hear about the work and get to know him. Like that's an extremely valuable use of your time. That's no different than you opening your studio up to Main Street, you know, of the world of the internet. So I, I, I love it. But anyway, that's where we're at. Thank you. I love your wallpaper. Oh, thank you. It's it's a it's a green screen, so I can change my. Wow. Yeah, I, I I I change it from time to time. It's a virtual background. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's a total. It's 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 nowhere near. It's nowhere near as pretty if I if I take off the uh, I, the image. I painted a thirty foot mural down in the Yucatan. That's what it actually looks like. Similar to that motif. So. I love I love the, I love yeah I love the Yucatan. Yeah, thanks for your, thanks for your energy. Oh yeah, it's my pleasure. I get fired up on this stuff. Um, <laughs> But yeah, well, we can we can definitely help you, Pamela. But yeah, definitely subscribe to the podcast too. There's a ton of good stuff on there. Okay, I'm gonna unmute you now, Mark. I got you. I'll let you know when you hit it. Bottom left hand corner. Just click. yep, that should do it. Awesome. Um, yeah. So whenever I see an email with your name, I I gotta go to the show and see what you have to say. So. Oh, thanks. They um, they I, although I, they uh, email they email with my name so much I don't even know all the emails that are going out it's crazy <laughs> it's like it's embarrassing sometimes. I wanted to get your feedback on international shipping. Yes. Um, I am doing the bay thing, mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm thinking that is so convenient and easy. I mean I, I can just I don't have to worry about international, but I've got an international market now. Yeah, amazing, it's right? It's, it's just it's amazing to me. It's like really it's really hard. Are you a customer already, by the way? 
Yeah. Oh, and you just jumped on this in <laughs> your classic. Yeah, and that's why I said, you know, I just uh... Yeah, no, no, it's 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 all good. But like just to just to like take a second for that, like contemplate how many businesses where you're the inventor, you're the creator, okay? The startup costs for you to create the creation are, are, are practically speaking minimal, right? Like you're not waiting for samples to come back from China or anything else. And you can sell worldwide. I mean, it's insane. Like it doesn't mean it's easy, but, it, but it, 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 it's kind of insane, right? Like when you just look at that whole picture, it's just like, wow, wow. And you, you've heard me tell the Laka story, right? On how many, how, inter, how international his buyers were on, on this basement sale thing he had blew me away. Yeah. So um, if you haven't met Matt, he doesn't, he's doing really well. So he never comes on the office hours. I have to like twist him and prod him to get him to come on the office hours. But he had this basement sale, okay? It was, it was two different live video broadcasts where he's pulling old inventory out of his basement that he had from like, you know, some of it was like six and eight and 10 years old that no one's seen since then. He sold 62 pieces, which was a little bit, they weren't high value. It was like a little bit over 30,000 Canadian, but sold to Canada, sold multiple pieces to Canada, multiple pieces to the United States, multiple pieces to South America, three to Germany, and like two or three to Southeast Asia somewhere. And I just looked at that and it's just like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Like, look what happens if he keeps going. Like, he's got a true international business on his hands. And the shipping, yeah. the shipping's just the shipping, right? Like, if you made the sale, everything else is pretty easy to sort out. You know, you box it and you ship it, and that's that. You insure it. Yeah. And they so, pay, well, and they uh, pay, so, and they pay. So my question is on international shipping. So I am, like, conceptualizing the limited editions and, and trying to get that mm -hmm. hashed out. So I'm, I'm going to offer, like, three different sizes in the limited editions mm -hmm. and and uh but then i thought about the international shipping and do i really want to go through the headache of me personally doing the international shipping or should i limit my so what number one you're not going to stress you're not even going to stress about this question in the slightest it's going to go completely out of your mind number one you're going to sell internationally and you're then you're going to deal with the problem then that's the way that's the way to approach it wait till you sell one internationally as soon as the order comes in Thank you so much, Mark. Where are you located? Oh, I'm in the UK. Amazing. This is my first sale to the UK. I've never figured out how to ship to you, but I'm willing to do it. Let me get back to you and then figure it out. Okay. It's not a problem until it's a problem, right? Everything, the hardest thing to do, sell internationally. Everything else, pretty easy to do, right? Like work out the shipping, work no, out what box we're going to use. Yeah, no, what, no, do you no, have no. a recommendation for shipping international? I, I think, I don't know. I could ask Matthew. I actually have no idea. I imagine it's DHL because DHL is pretty much always... What everyone uses when once you go into the inter international zone. I'm, I'm not. I'm going live this week, but I, I had you know inquiries from like Panama, mm -hmm. um, South America, yeah. and Europe. You know what will happen yeah. is you'll get ten orders, and by order number ten, I think, um, I think you will stop having a problem with it because you'll figure it out, right? It might be a pain in the butt the first time. I mean, I know when it's an original, the boxing it up sucks. It sucks. Boxing it up, wrapping it up, making sure it arrives, all of that sucks. But that's just part of the process. That's, that's, there's no getting around it, right? Your, your deal will be get 10 orders, ship them all, learn what system works best for you, and then continue to get more of them. As soon as you do, hire a local kid on Craigslist that shows up in your garage, knows how to do the whole packing, will take it to the shop, you'll pay them and you won't touch it because then you can get back to your marketing. That's what well, I told you. I guess you. I'll have it shipped from Bay to me so it'll already have the packaging, right? Yeah, I mean, if you if you do it that way, like I, I'm looking behind you and considering you're talking about originals. If you're talking about prints it, and it's just signed prints, yeah, you got nothing to worry about. Yeah. It comes yeah. out. So, yeah. so I've only ever done originals. So this whole concept of prints. In fact, I'm, I'm I'm having everything reshot tomorrow with a professional photographer because mm -hmm. I'm not happy with the color matching and all yeah, that yep. stuff. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll have that done before I go live. But uh, I did do your pivot that mm -hmm. you talked about a, a week ago, and mm -hmm. that's. So originally, um, like the piece behind me is is going to be in an exhibit um, from November through January 31st. Mm -hmm. At uh, this is Colorado exhibit, so that's mm -hmm. it's awesome advertising. Um, and I was going to, so if I do a limited edition of that for let's say it's 100 pieces, I was thinking maybe if I I I, I told the organization if I give them the first because they'll want a 38 percent commission. Uh, yeah. What, what, what do you think if I if, if I approach him and say, you know, because the piece is not for sale, but I would do limited edition prints and I would say, you know, out of a portion of my limited edition prints, I'll give you the first one through 10 or one through 20 or. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I cringe the 38% because I just, I feel like it's exploitative. I hate it, but I'm also unemotional about it. If they bring attention and they bring buyers to you, then it's worth it, right? Like you can do that split. Right. Yeah. I and, see. I look at it from marketing. You yeah, know? you have to. You have to, right? Like if, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Lesson learned and you move on to the next thing, right? And so for my uh, print giveaway, mm -hmm. on, when I opened this site, I was originally going to do this one, but was, this is the uh, this is a pivot I did, which is Eddie. Yeah, Eddie Van yeah, Van. yeah, yeah. Just died. Yeah, so sad. What a, what a what a legendary figure. And so that's uh, I guess that's what I'm going to do the giveaway on. Cool. The Eddie yeah, Van. good timing for that. People will go nuts. Okay, and then I could do another giveaway for to announce the show, like. Because that starts in November. Yeah, I, I, I probably would. I probably would. Like, it, it, it's, it's an incredibly valuable technique and tactic. And, you know, in terms of a marketing expense, it's also, you know, pretty, pretty inexpensive in the grand scheme of things. So, you know, you, you, the, 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 the concept of the print giveaways, it's, it's no different than running an ad on Facebook. The cost is just the print instead of giving the money to Mark Zuckerberg. He has enough. Do you do? Do you recommend the boot? Because I did start my um, Facebook business page, mm -hmm. and I get this keep getting this thing about do you want to do a five dollar boost? No, the... no, no. The eleventh commandment, the eleventh commandment of digital marketing is thou shall not boost posts, ever, ever, ever. No boosting posts. No, no. Okay. Yeah, I say that. Well, I say that uh, qu quite significantly. You're not. You're realistically not ready for Facebook ads yet. Period. Um, but don't okay. don't don't waste a dime on on boosting posts. You know the 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 analogy I give is it all starts with a flawed premise, and the flawed premise is that there's some easy way. Okay, there's some easy way where you can just spend some money and have it grow your business. Okay, that's what everyone thinks. Like it's like the get rich quick. That's where the boost post exists. It doesn't okay. exist. The way to think of it is like fishing. Okay, and Mark's got a boat, and I've got a boat. Right. And we both have the same boat, uh, similar captains. We're leaving from the same harbor, and we're steaming out to go try and catch some fish. On your boat, all you have is the one fishing line because you're not doing any marketing. You just have your boosted post, and you're going to go out to the middle of the ocean. You're going to try and catch fish with that. Problem is, there's a lot of space out there in the ocean, okay? Me, on the other hand, on my boat, I have that same fishing line as well as outriggers and three other fishing line. I have kites. I have lobster pots. I've got harpoons. Okay. You got it dialed in. Yes. So when I go out to the ocean, the chances of me coming back with seafood are significantly higher than you. So what are all those additional riggings and lines and everything else? It's a comprehensive marketing system. You have to be capturing emails regularly. You have to be emailing those emails regularly. You have to be posting on the socials regularly. You have to be able to execute a sale correctly. Okay. And, and know when to do those and how to do those. You need to be doing warm ads on Facebook. The difference between warm and cold is they know you. They've experienced and interacted with your brand. Uh, you need to be having the live art shows and the flash sales, okay? When you're doing all of that, then you're in a position where you might actually see the ROI of paid advertising. If you're not doing that, you are never going to see the ROI of paid advertising, period. You might as well go down to the local 7-Eleven and put money on the lotto. I don't know if you, ever, everyone else's state has a lotto, but the odds are terrible. So that's, that's, okay. that's, that's what we teach, and it's important. Like, don't ever boost a post, ever, ever, ever. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then uh, for the get, um, I need to go through the material on the on the on the giveaway. But I assume it's like a, like a two week, you know. In two weeks, I'm going to be giving this away. Yeah, you yeah you you don't need you. I mean, I'm I'm stoked you're on the call, but you don't need to worry about anything that I'm saying aside from just following all the onboarding and launch guides. Get your site live, get that first giveaway going, and then and then just get into your marketing. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Right. And I'll see you. I'll see you in uh, in in office hours and small wins and everything else. Um, but yeah, I and, and Pamela, I see your message on the shipping. That's that's super helpful. It's you know it, it it's a perfect example though of like I, I normally say that artists and photographers always have these things that are stuck in their brain, preventing them from taking any further constructive steps towards selling. And you know it, it, the the reality is is that you don't have any problem aside from selling the art. That is the hardest problem to solve. Anything after that is so easy to solve. State it another way, okay? When do you go down to the bank and start a new business, okay? You know, where you start the business account, you get the tax ID and all that. You know when you do it? When you have your first check in your hand. Don't ever do it until then. 
Don't ever do it until then. It is a waste of time and nonsense until then. You don't need to do it. Have that thirst check in your hand. Okay, now it's time to go down there and figure it out. Get the sale first. Everything else is easy. But what do people do? Oh, I just gotta, I just gotta get you know these extra six or seven pieces on my site, and then it'll be perfect. Oh, I just gotta get the website so it it looks great and it's, it's a perfect reflection. Oh, I just gotta figure out what my various different media types are uh, so that I know. Uh, or uh, I gotta just figure out what my what my what my shipping costs are gonna be, and then I can launch. Or you know, I just have to narrow it down to a niche, and then all then all, you know, you're you're working on all of those things. And the days turn into weeks, turn into months, turn into years. No constructive steps forward, no progress in the business. You don't have a business. The only thing that matters is selling. You need to sell your work. Once you sell your work, everything else becomes so, so easy. Uh, so, so much easier, I should say. Never becomes easy. It's always a, a bit of a grind and a slog. Um, but okay, any, any other questions for me? on the socials, you know, I, I saw, an, uh, this is another perfect example, and I'm, I'm gonna read it from Facebook, and it's from Denise. Hi, I have been seeing my paintings in painted cigar boxes for 20 years now, and when I think seeing, I think she says selling. My illustrations and paintings have been in numerous publications, yet I continually underprice my work, wanting people who are not rich to have my work is holding me back from financial success. This is just essentially the pricing conundrum, right? And all you have to do is let me, let me set the pricing for you. Art is completely arbitrary. You can't be comparison shopped. They're not gonna get the same piece of artwork at the other store across the way, like look at the prices, apple to apple. So you can raise your prices. Many people struggle with raising the prices. Uh, you can either have a strong cocktail or something along those lines, have a friend do it when you're not looking, uh, but you have to overcome the ability to price too low. And, it, and, it, and it's just a simple hurdle to jump over. So, all right. Guys, thanks. That was a lot of fun. I appreciate it. Um, we run these things thrice weekly, so you can certainly get on another one. Um, if you're considering joining, we have a pre-Black Friday sale, as you can see in the chat, which is an incredibly good deal um, for what we offer. We're, we're sensitive to the fact that COVID's on. Uh, we're also sensitive to the fact that the biggest art buying time of the entire year is coming up in Q4. So it is a great time to get your stuff live and get selling. We can help you. Um, you can request a demo, it's in the chat, or if you're watching on Facebook somewhere else, it is in the description. Um, April's also putting links to subscribe on YouTube, which is a great way to be able to listen to the podcast, or you can subscribe to the podcast. Uh, you can get the podcast anywhere. You have fine podcasts, it's just called the Art Marketing Podcast, but it's totally free, and it's got a lot of awesome in it and has for a long time. It's, I think, the highest rated art marketing podcast on iTunes, which, you know, given, given the host, which is me, is not saying much, but, you know, it's still pretty good. Um, but thank you guys. Everybody have a great rest of your week. And uh, yeah, hope to see you on a live or around. Bye, guys.